Hey guys, welcome back to Defiral, your wormhole from TradFi to DeFi. And in today's video, we're going to talk about what is known as ETH 2.0, aka right now called the merge. As usual, nothing of what we say in this video should be taken as financial advice. If you actually need financial advice, please, please speak. To a pro. So MJ, do you still own any Ethereum? Yes, I do. Only because uh, in order for me to get rid of the Ethereum, I have to spend a lot of Ethereum. Uh, so it's not worth doing anything to the Ethereum right. in the first place. Essentially, cold storage right now in your MetaMask. Lah. Yeah, it's forever there, you know. I think it's like... Sad. I mean, it fluctuates. Now it's up, so it's probably at $120 worth of ETH, something like that. So yes, I do own, as a disclaimer, Ethereum. Diamond hand. Me too, a little bit. And same reason as well. Can't really yeah. transfer it out. Don't really want to transfer it out and spend a shit ton of money on it. Yeah. Okay, today we're going to talk about um, Ethereum's merge, an upcoming Ethereum merge. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they have scrapped the name Ethereum 2.0 because it's uh, confusing. So let's just call it the merge. Now, MJ, you've been doing a bit of research on this. Uh, what exactly is the ETH merge? So the first thing uh, for people to understand is that uh, this, whatever this is happening, is probably going to be the biggest uh, development. Mm. Don't know whether it's the biggest news, but certainly it's the biggest development in I think blockchain, blockchain and as a whole, right? Mm. So um, the reason why uh, Ethereum wanted to um, do this is because they actually had a plan to evolve their ecosystem from what they call Ethereum 1.0 to Ethereum 2.0. Mm. So before I go into the technicalities, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'll do my best. Um, going from 1.0 to 2.0 is an enhancement on what they're doing, but they decided to call it uh, a merge because Ethereum 1.0 and Ethereum 2.0 sounds like there's two chains. There's going to be two Ethereum, ah, okay. which is not what they want. Hence, they want to merge it. But regardless, why are they moving from 1 to 2.0 and why are they merging? Um, Ethereum 1.0 is, as we know, uh, very, very expensive. You know, one Twitter user uh, said it best, you have to sell your kidney to make transactions. Mm. Um, and a lot of this has to do with the scaling issues, right? Uh, right now, Ethereum can only do 15 transactions per second or something, 15 TPS. Mm. Um, so what this means is that if you want anything to be faster, you need to motivate the people securing the network to allow you to skip the queue to get things faster. So in order to get things faster, your transactions, minting NFTs, whatever, uh, you need to pay more. And that's why it's uh, very common for uh, people in Ethereum to pay hundreds of US dollars in a transaction. That hundreds of US dollars is quite rare, but you know, People do 20, 30, 20, 30, 20, 30. Before you know it, right, you spend hundreds of dollars, sometimes yeah. even thousands on, uh, on... It adds up. La. Now, it's not really a problem to people who have a lot of Ethereum, but it is a problem to people entering Ethereum. And also, Ethereum is the right now the most vibrant layer, mm. uh, layer one or layer zero, depending on how you want to look at it, um, out there right now with the NFT space going, all the big games are on there. Uh, all the established uh, DeFi protocols are also on Ethereum. So that's the place to be for most people. Yeah. And if you're going to make it expensive, then obviously that's not very good. Now, uh, how to solve it? Um, basically, it's a scaling solution. And one of the big things that they want to go from ETH 1.0 to 2.0 uh, is uh, to move from proof of work to proof of stake. stake. Okay, again, super technical, so I'm not going to go, go into it. Mm -hmm. But that is basically what's happening. And when they do that, um, they will then allow this group of protocols called uh, Layer 2s, you know, your ZK rollups, and I can't remember all the names. Some, really. some of the names are like Polygon Matic. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, Arbitrum and. To help solve this. And with this merge and the movement into 2.0. Yeah. Um, it is said that their TPS can go from go from 15 to thousands. Now, the, the, the issue now is that the uh, thousands is not defined. Some people say there's a theoretical limit of 100,000, which would then rank it alongside, I believe, Solana or yeah, something. Solana faster shit yeah. if that's the case. But right? again, there's no, f f from what I understand. Mm. So yeah, that is, uh, that is 
in short, what's happening. Okay, okay. So I feel like, um, as you said, this is one of the bigger, more significant events uh, that may or may not come this year because Ethereum, uh, if you've been following the updates over the years, right, they have been notorious for delaying the shipment yeah. of their updates. I think Ethereum 2.0, aka the merge, has always been stated to be done actually late last year. Yeah. Or to this year, It'll be Q2 or Q3 this yeah. year. Fingers crossed. But then again, it's a really technical process like that. Yeah, yeah. Of course, they don't want it to be, they don't want it to, to, to they don't ship 40 products. Now. So, um, based on what you just said, right, I just want to know, I want a sense of uh, what do you feel, how do you feel this may affect uh, the Ethereum ecosystem or the general crypto ecosystem as a whole? Right. So, actually, if you can pass me your, your laptop because Boom. I wrote down some cheat sheets. Some notes. Yes, yeah, a cheat sheet. Uh, so, how does it affect? Let's start with maybe some of the the positive, right? Yeah. So one of the things that make Bitcoin valuable was the fact that it has a uh, fixed supply. So um, now this is a big issue in 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 you know altcoins and all that where uh, people are always thinking is this inflationary or is this a deflationary token or a fixed token, mm. right? So for example, Luna is actually an elastic token. That means it can be inflationary or deflationary depending on USD demand, for example. But um, Ethereum, when they move into 2.0 or when they merge, um, depending on who you ask, right? Right now, the inflation rate is something anywhere between like 4 to 2%. But if you include their gas fee burns, which is this EIP-1559 base, Thing, like, okay, yeah. I'm not an expert again, but you know, Ethereum burns fees, right? Uh, um, burns gas in the when the when fees, uh, yeah, okay, anyway. So, one point it will drop to 0.43 percent, uh, or in some cases, um, negative 2.2 percent. So, what this really means is that with the POS or the proof of stake system mm -hmm. is likely to become a deflationary asset. So you're buying, if you're buying Ethereum after uh, now and then when the merge comes and all that, yeah. uh, you're buying an asset that will actually Come scarce decline. Scarce. Yes, it will decline in supply. And okay. so uh, in theory, it should become more valuable uh, like, uh, you know, limited edition Rolex yeah. watch and imagine a limited Rolex, limited edition Rolex, all the limited edition Rolex watches in the world and every day someone is destroying one of the watch, right? Okay. So that's something, that, that's the idea. Lah, Pretty good visual representation. Being. Exactly. Mm. Um, another, actually it's good or bad thing, it all depends on how you look at it. They will now, there will not be no more, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, mining. So you yeah. can mine for Ethereum anymore. I know you're an Ethereum miner, so sorry. Oops, don't dox uh, me. So your ESG, ESG uh, companies who have always been holding back to want to invest yeah. in Ethereum will now be... Correct, correct. Happily, you know, it's ESG yeah, compliant, so. uh, energy costs going down. So they're moving on into a proof of um, stake concept, right? So then now in, instead of using, so a lot of people actually use the the fees that they get from mining, uh, sorry, the, the ETH that they get from mining yeah. to subsidize their transaction costs, uh, right? Um, but the with the POS system, um, you can now stake your Ethereum. Now, the exact mechanism, I'm not so sure how they, they're working out now, but you should go from 5 to anywhere between 7 to 12%. In so terms that's like of your interest rate that you get if you kind of lock your Ethereum on, on the protocol or on-chain, right? Yes, yeah. that, that, that will be correct. Now, um, why this is it's expected to rise a lot is because mm. um, once this happens, so the key thing is that actually nothing will change after this to you as an Ethereum user, you still have to pay those expensive gas fees. Mm. And the reason you need to pay those expensive gas fees is because um, they don't have the scaling infrastructure yet to allow them to transact as co at, at, uh, at a cost like what we have with uh, Luna, the Soluna Vaxxers and Phantom and all that, the other alternative L1s. The reason is because the Layer 2s have not solve the problem of scaling for Ethereum yet. And it's not going to solve it immediately after the merge. The merge just changed the consensus mechanism only, mm. uh, from POW to POS. So as the L2 wars heat up, a lot of transactions will happen, trial and error, a lot of building will happen on, layer t uh, on Ethereum. And so all these gas fees and transactions and whatever will start happening. And of course, all this can translate into staking rewards for, you know, yeah. Ethereum users. And so that's why the staking rewards are anticipated to be higher. 
So if you're if you're saying that the prices of the gas fee will remain relatively high, yeah, or at least it, it would drop, but it won't drop as significantly as people believe. Like it won't be like your two cents on Phantom or your five cents on yeah, Luna, yeah, right? uh, yeah, unlikely, so unlikely. I think that see, it seems to me like the hype on all over social media or all over crypto sphere seems to be unjustified at this point. The the the, the challenge now is like what 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 kind of throughput they can handle. Okay, okay. And, and that's that, not certain yet, right? To, to my knowledge, I okay. could be wrong. Maybe some people already have their own uh, technical as, as okay. estimates of it. Like, again, I'm not a developer, so I can't really comment much on the TPS. And anyway, everything is in theory. In practice, you know, yeah. who, who knows, right? Um, but uh, yeah, right now, it will not change all the way until 2023, where L2 will come and sharding will come as well. Okay. Sharding is a way, from my understanding, for people in Web2 to actually speed things up so they're just using the same concept and applying it into right. uh, Ethereum la. this actually sounds like um, there's more time especially if you believe in uh, a world where multiple layer ones and layer ones means Phantom your Solana your Terra to exist uh, I wouldn't say harmoniously but to exist together Correct. fighting into each other's market share this gives them more time to develop to gain uh, users and to actually eat into Big Daddy Ethereum's market share man the big challenge for me uh, when asking about the alternative L1s is mm. uh, A, how much cheaper will the gas fees become once L2 and sharding and all that appears yeah. and you know there are delays and all that. And also how much will the, Soluna, the, the alternative L1s right, grow in uh, stature when compared to what's happening in Ethereum? Mm. Will there be a clear open sea rival? Will there be a bet? Will there be a better curve, right? Will yeah. there be, I don't know, things that are more a more robust ecosystem? That that really remains to be seen because one of the great things about Ethereum is that it's uh, very secure, mm. right? It's a very secure system compared to let's say a Solana where um, throughputs are, you know, very very they can take huge throughputs, but then they are periods, I think twice really, where they shut down. Yeah. And in the case of like Luna, for example, uh, you know, we are holders of Luna. So, but Luna hasn't had a big flush of activity on the same level of Ethereum sure. because a lot of people in Luna are just coming in to put it into Anchor. Mm. Right, like I think half the TVL is in Anchor. So a lot of them are just static and just receiving their yeah, their, 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 their rewards that way. So oh, have, have they been tra- stress tested yet in terms of throughput? I don't know. Yeah. So I think knowing knowing those characteristics that you just mentioned, even with the upgrades of Ethereum 2.0, it gives me a um, a broader understanding of how different chains actually are characteristically. And then, yeah, yeah I think, don't, this is why I feel, and again, it's not financial advice, right? It's, if you look at the top 10 cryptos uh, since 20, since four years ago, the only two, uh, that still exists probably Bitcoin and Ethereum the exactly. only two largest ones so as much as sometimes in this uh, channel we diss like some of these older tokens and call it boomer coins right yeah, yeah. they're there for a reason and they're there because they've stood the test of time they stood uh, they survived through various bear markets that easily wipe out a lot of the other larger coins uh, back in yeah. 2016-2017 right and you know I think that's if any investment thesis is, it, it, that is that is mine. Uh, sure. there, there is a good chance that a lot of L1s will not be around or be as relevant because mm. many L1s don't have the same vibrancy as as, yeah. uh, as Ethereum. So you need your L1 to, if you're invested in whatever L1, Luna, um, Phantom, or like, you need to make sure that they're you know, trying to present something a bit different mm. from what Ethereum is. If you're going head to head, you have to make sure that A, your throughput is going to be better. B, your transactions are going to be a lot cheaper. And C, yeah. you are not going to be... I don't think anyone can be as vibrant as Ethereum right now. Right. The hardest thing to fork is, as they always say, is community, right? Yeah, yeah. That is a base community. Ethereum is the ultimate one right now. Yeah. So, But one thing that I, I want to bring up as well, and this is just the last bit, right, is uh, actually... Um, Many people are calling this ultrasound money, right? Ethereum is ultrasound yeah. money because uh, it is deflationary and it has all these things going on. I disagree. I think that uh, ultrasound money needs to be stable. Uh, Ethereum is not stable. So I think it's an ultrasound investment rather, right? Mm. 
um, rather than it's going to be used for uh, transactions, uh, or rather to be used as a currency la, globally. Yeah. Uh, of course, in the DeFi world, that's more or less there uh, for, for uh, Ethereum. But I think that's where the role of stable coins come in, where they, 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 will, they will become more like money. And what makes a stable coin sound will be what is backing the stable coin that's it. Mm. So is it, uh, is it USDC where it's partially backed by Ethereum? Yeah, could, could be. Or is it Luna? When it's, or is it uh, UST where it's backed by Terra? Could be. But I don't think I would call it ultra sound money. See, yeah. I think that's an easy marketing term or slash gimmick that people use to uh, promote Ethereum yeah. to the masses. Uh, anything else you want to add, MJ? No, there's always more to add, but I think, I think it's good. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video so far, if you enjoyed the video up to this point, yeah. uh, give it a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. And we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.